Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Damien, for this uh, introduction. Uh, my thesis work that I will uh, talk about today is uh, supervised both by Mathilde Philippe, an expert in uh, marketing research from Stratégir, and by uh, Evelyne Vigneault, Mustafa Canary, and Sébastien Lé, who are, uh, in addition of being the organizer of this uh, beautiful conference, experts in statistics from uh, Oniris and AgroCampus West. I am uh, very pleased to be there today to present my work during uh, this virtual uh, conference. Uh, my thesis work uh, consists in the... Yes consists in the development and uh, analysis of a new sensory method called... J'entends des gens, c'est normal. <laughs> non, c'est pas normal, je vais aller voir ce qui se passe. <laughs> oh, bah, <retenu> Eric. <laughs> uh, so, as I was saying, um, my thesis work consists in the development and analysis of a new sensory method called uh, Frigar Profiling. It is, in fact, a method that allows to obtain in an original and operational way the keys to uh, improve products in a product development context. So the analysis of this data appears uh, quite complicated due to the nature of the data, which combines uh, hedonic information to textual data. So my presentation today will focus on uh, a particular aspect of my work, which is the analysis of uh, fragile data using a combination of lexical preprocessing and machine learning strategies. In particular, I will uh, first introduce you what a Frigar procedure is. Then I will explain why and how we can extract uh, a quantitative score from this, de this description through uh, machine learning methods. And finally, I will propose a way to improve the performance of the machine learning algorithm with uh, preprocessing of the data. So first, uh, let's make a reminder for those who already know, know it or a definition for those who don't know it yet of the fragile uh, procedure. This is a two-step procedure. And in the first place, the set of products to be evaluated is placed in front of each respondent. Once it's done, uh, the respondents are asked to classify the products according to three hedonic categories, which are I don't like, I like moderately, and I like very much. Then, uh, once this categorization is done, uh, they are asked to describe the product according to their own attributes, but based on a jar structuration, structuration which means uh, by using terms such as too much, not enough, or just right. This method can be connected with two well-known procedures, which are the jar procedure and free comments. The free jar could be placed as a sort of in-between between, between uh, these two methods, while going beyond the limits that may characterize them. Uh, indeed, whereas in the JAR procedure, respondents are constrained to evaluate all the attributes present in the predefined list, which can bias the results, they are free to use the attributes they consider important, uh, those they want, to describe the product in the free JAR procedure. Moreover, while open-ended questions do not necessarily provide product improvement keys in a directly operational way, the use of JAR structure in the free JAR comments uh, provides such information. So once the respondents have completed these two steps, uh, all the individual data are put together in a large table. The data set provided e by a free jar procedure is structured in this way. So here we have an example on the cheese uh, data. So you have the respondent, the product assessed, the ethnic categorization in which uh, the respondent put the product, and the free jar description. It is important to note that uh, free jar data are very rich, especially because of the use of jar structures that allow the assets and weaknesses of uh, products to be highlighted. The richness of this data also lies in the fact that each respondent uses their own uh, sensory attributes. But we must also consider the fact that free jar data are complex because, first of all, they are textual data, so there may be noise in the comments provided. And uh, although since respondents do not assess product according to the same sensory attributes, the analysis basis is not uh, homogeneous and therefore a bit complicated to, to grasp. Uh, the use of these particular structures, uh, I mean the terms uh, too much, not enough, and just right, highlights the assets and weaknesses of products and uh, thus expresses a kind of balance. In psychology, the term valence is used to identify the intrinsically pleasant or unpleasant quality of a stimulus. So it seems uh, interesting to try to quantify this valence, positive or negative, because indeed this quantification will allow to bring subtleties on the, the various comments by weighting these sentences 
with the assets and weaknesses present in each of them. It will uh, also make it possible to obtain a ranking between two comments or to carry out statistical analysis from this course, which uh, would not have been possible with uh, textual data only. Uh, so it is this quantification that, will, that I will uh, talk about uh, in this presentation. And in particular, the different way to compute this balance will be discussed. And then a uh, way to validate the consistency of the score uh, will be presented. So first of all, uh, in order to obtain such a score, we refer to the field of natural language processing, also referred to as NLP and in particular to the subfield of sentiment analysis, whose goal is to analyze textual data in order to deduce the different sentiments uh, expressed in it. The first approach to sentiment analysis is a lexical one based on dictionaries and the weights assigned to each word and each grammatical word. However, this approach is uh, time consuming to implement dependent on the product space because for example, what's positive for coffee is not uh, necessarily positive for a candy and subjective because uh, it relies on the uh, experimenter's interpretation. A second approach to sentiment analysis is an algorithmic approach based on machine learning methods. Machine learning is a field of artificial intelligence that allows computers to have the ability to learn from data, allowing them to solve tasks such as classification or prediction. It is less, it is less uh, subjective because it's based on collected data only. However, um, in sensory evaluation, a classical study usually leads to, leads to a few hundred comments. So with a lexical approach only, the processing would be very long on such an amount of data because the comments must be analyzed one by one in order to create dictionaries, assign, assign weights, and so on. Uh, with an algorithmic approach only, this amount of data would be insufficient to run robust machine learning uh, algorithms. So to overcome these issues, a hybrid approach between the two is studied, uh, whose goal is to find a balance between algorithm automation and data preprocessing in order to improve the performance of the uh, overall approach. So in this presentation, we will focus on the algorithmic approach. Um, in the first part, I will present how to obtain a balance score thanks to this approach. And then in the second part, I will propose a method to improve the performance of the algorithm thanks to a preprocessing of the data, but without uh, using dictionaries, which uh, let's remember seem a little too subjective. So let's go back to free jar data. Um, as developed previously uh, for a respondent and for a product, we have a hedonic information, which is the, um, the category in which the product has been placed by the respondent, and a comment structure with terms such as uh, too much, not enough, and just right. Uh, this association between these uh, two types of data reminds uh, supervised classification data, which means a measure associated with a class. So it seems then uh, interesting to use a classifier to understand the link between hedonic categorization and textual data. The classifier uh, thus links the presence or absence of each word to the hedonic categorization. In the examples presented uh, on this slide, it will uh, understand that the term sweet is often associated with a positive hedonic category, while the presence of the term strong is often associated with a negative hedonic category. So for each comment, uh, the classifier provides a membership probability to each of the three hedonic categories. We then define uh, the, val the valence score as the probability that the comment belongs to the I like very much category, from which uh, we subtract the probability that the comment belongs to the I don't like category. The higher the difference, uh, the more positive the comment. The valence score is uh, calculated this way for each of the free jar uh, comments. Uh, and thus we have for each comment, a valence score and a hedonic categorization. To measure the consistency of the valence scores in relation with the hedonic categories and thus the performance of the approach, we first define the discrimination ratio as the ratio between the between variance and the total variance. This uh, ratio reflects the strength of the relationship between the valence scores and the hedonic categories. Secondly, uh, we define the classifier accuracy as the ratio of the number of correct classifications to the total number of classifications, which reflect the efficiency of the classifier. Uh, the random forest uh, classifier is used to, to obtain the valence score, first with a purely uh, algorithmic approach, which means without any preprocessing of the data. Uh, that could be compared to a level zero of preprocessing. 
a live one out strategy at the subject level is used and we then represent by box plots the relationship between the valence scores obtained and the then categories in which the product related to the comments were placed by the respondents. So here you can see that the discrimination ratio is 0 0.28 and the accuracy of the classifier is 0 0.6. Uh, moreover, the p-value associated with the f-test for this graph is very low, which means that the effect of the variable factor hedonic category on the valence score is uh, significant. So um, at this point, we are quite satisfied because we, we were able to obtain a valence score automatically without human intervention. Uh, this score will allow us to bring nuances to the sentence since, for example, between two positive comments or between two negative comments. However, uh, the discrimination ratio seems to be quite low and we aim to improve it while um, helping the classifier through a pre-processing of the textual data, focusing on the important word. Uh, this is the aim of the second part of this presentation. So to do so, different levels of pre-processing were tested. Um, unlike the lexical approach of sentiment analysis, these pre-processing are not based on dictionaries with weights assigned to each word and so on, because as I already said it, it is uh, time consuming and quite subjective. So level zero represents the comment from which we remove the primers. This is the one we tested uh, in the previous slide, because indeed primers such as I like this product because, or I don't like this product because, are given to respondents as examples during uh, the description step of the free jar, but they can naturally bias the, the classification, so we decided to remove them. Uh, level one preprocessing represents comments without stop word, which means words that are unimportant for understanding the comments. Level two represents comments within which uh, synonym for, for the modalities too much, not enough, and just right are renamed under the label too much, not enough, and just right, respectively. And finally, uh, the last level of preprocessing represents the attributes grouped according to an identify list in order to define under the same term uh, the synonyms. So valence score are calculated for the level three of preprocessing. And we can see that the discrimination ratio is now much higher with a score of 0 0.59 and the accuracy of the classifier is also better with a score of 0 0.7. Uh, here again, there is a significant effect of the hedonic category factor on the calculated uh, valence score. I represented here the evolution of the discrimination ratio according to the level of preprocessing. We can see that uh, there is a clear improvement between level one and level two of preprocessing. In addition uh, to random forest, the SVM classifier was also tested. The evolution of the discrimination ratio for each of the classifiers as a function of the level of preprocessing is shown is, uh, on this slide. And it appears that the valence scores obtained by uh, the random forest classifier are more related to the hedonic categories than those obtained by the SVM classifier when the data are pretreated with a low level of preprocessing. On the contrary, when uh, the data are preprocessed at a higher level, uh, the discrimination ratio resulting from the scores provided by SVM seems to meet or even exceed those provided by random forest. So these results are interesting because they allow us to question which classifier to use depending on the pre-treatment level. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, this study highlights the importance of the association between data pre-processing and machine learning to improve the performance of the classifier, especially in the field of sensory analysis where the amount of data collected is not necessarily suitable to perform analysis based on machine learning. The, the main strength of this approach is the fact that it is fed by consumer data and then enhanced by pre-processing. The quantitative score uh, provided will then allow to perform analyze, analysis that would not have been possible with textual data only in particular to compare the project, for example. Um, as there is no clear difference between level two and level three of preprocessing, we would wonder uh, if the grouping of synonymous attributes had a real added value. These benefits um, of preprocessing three could potentially be found in the highlighting of project assets and weaknesses, which is more, uh, maybe more effective with the grouping of synonyms. Some um, avenues are being investigated to highlight these um, improvement keys, and uh, in particular, the importance of variables provided by a uh, random forest and the concept of interpretability with the use of the LIME algorithm seem uh, promising to highlight the words that have the most um, impact on uh, positive or negative categorization. Uh, this information will uh, 
for example, allow us to decide if the cost provided to perform the synonym clustering is uh, worthwhile or if level two is sufficient and satisfying us. So thank you very much for your attention. I will be pleased to, uh, to answer your question if you have. Thank you. Thank you, Alexian, for this interesting uh, talk. Uh, I can see one question maybe of Eric uh, in the chat just now. Very nice talk, Alexian. All a pleasure. <laughs> OK. Uh, no, <laughs> do you have a question, Eric, maybe? Uh, don't hesitate to, um, to go uh, in the orange uh, speaker uh, space if you want to ask a question directly to Alexian. Oui, Cassandra. Hello, yes, yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Time to unlock everything. Okay, that's good. Yes, thank you for your presentation. I uh, just had a question regarding consumer clustering. So do you think um, different also could be different if you have clusters of consumers who like maybe products for different reasons or different products? Um, yes. Um the use of Fuja is uh, rather required uh, in exploratory uh, phases of product development. Uh, so the method will allow us to know. Oh, je m'entends. Ouais. <laughs> Merci. Um, the method allows us to know if the space in which we are formulating is well defined, or if it drifts uh, a little, or if it goes in several directions. So. I think uh, that in a R and D uh, phase, we start with two groups at, at most, unless you don't know anything about it. So I would recommend sample size um, of 80 to 100 people to being sufficient to confirm whether whether we are in the right uh, development zone or not, even if there are clustering of uh, of consumer. Okay, thank you. Okay, maybe I've got uh, one question, Alexian. Uh, do you did you compare uh, your method with other classical method uh, that we can use to, to analyze uh, the jar data uh, classical way? Uh, yeah, in fact, we are uh, writing an article about this um, okay. regarding the comparison of free jar uh, procedure to the jar procedure. Mm -hmm. um, the conclusion are that uh, we can. Um, we can combine both because Fujar procedure um, can highlight uh, attributes that we have not necessarily thought of when we define the predefined list to assess in JAR. And then you can run a JAR based on the attributes highlighted during the Fujar, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, clear. Thank you.